$18. And also number six, Encryption, which is $21 into $15. So that is the markets, courtesy of Bet365 for all the Blue Diamond Stakes. And of course, we've got a great promotional opportunity for you today. Uh, through Bet365, racing cash back up to $50 money back if your runner finishes second or third on race six, which we've had run and one, and also race eight at Caulfield today. Take advantage of that promo. Peter Moody knows what it takes to win a Blue Diamond. You did it with uh, reward for effort back in 2009. It's been interesting talking to you over the past couple of weeks, Pete, about the importance of the development of the two-year-olds as they target this, the big Group 1 feature. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, it's just so easy to lose them in a prep. You know, there's so many variables for a young horse. They're immature. Um, they don't cope with things as much as or as well as older horses. You get coughs, colds, shin soreness, just general bone soreness, growing pains. And uh, until you actually see them present in the yard and how they look, you, you probably really don't get a guide to that only the stable insiders know it but you, you line up in a race like this and you're coming from big professional stables and uh, you know the people want them here in 110 percent so uh, you know great race this is our this is our uh, sort of biggest two-year-old race of the year here in victoria and a tremendously open race as well talk about a couple of things here written by who you were quite glowing about with your appraisal a couple of weeks ago a lot of money for him today for graham Begg. um he's this i suppose a sense of timing about him coming into this race yeah for sure he's uh, you'd think he's got to improve off that run the other day. Not a big horse, doesn't catch her, and he's the first one into the yard, but, I, you know, I don't think the barrier's a concern. What concerns me probably here today with this wind is I'd rather horses sort of sort of near the fence, the, the ones that are sweeping wide are struggling, written by is going to roll forward, he's got 700 metres to roll across to some sort of a spot Jordan Childs doesn't have to rush him out of the gates to do that, so uh, if he can just cruise across and be in that first half dozen, not too far from the fence, he's going to give himself a chance You know how hard it is to get a runner in a group 1 race let alone win one, Hayes and uh, the Lindsay Park team with 4 Tony McAvoy with 4, Godolphin James Cummings with 2, they need a pat on the back just in their own right for being able to get the runners here Oh, Big effort, big effort to get them here and and, uh, you know, on shape in this uh, order on this day. Uh, tremendous effort. You know, admittedly, those three stables have big numbers of two-year-olds, but you've still got to get them here. So congratulations and kudos to them and their staff for doing it. I'll let you go and have a look at the runners. This is the big one of the day, the Group 1 Ladbrokes Blue Diamond Stakes with $1.5 million, uh, yeah, $1 million in prize money on offer. Oh, it's a great field assembled now for the Group 1 Blue Diamond Stakes, Victoria's number one two-year-old race, and we're led by the one long leaf for the Lindsay Park team. Kieran McAvoy takes a ride on the son of Fastnet Rock. Three starts for three wins. Clint Hutchison, he's looked outstanding on each occasion. He has looked outstanding, and uh, he's a big chance, no doubt, amongst many others, but should get a nice run from there. You would have felt that the step up to 1,200 would be ideal, and, uh, you know, they've planned him for this race, and he's got to be a big hope. Jane, he's been a, a magnificent-looking uh, colt, uh, through when we saw him in the spring to his development here now in the early part of the autumn carnival. Has he caught your eye again today? We'll catch uh, Jane's thoughts on Longleaf shortly. Let's move on to Written By number two. Graham Begg saddles up this son of Written Tycoon for his uh, legendary father, Neville Begg, and partners involved there to be ridden by Jordan Childs. Two from two, Hutch, and he's been good on both occasions. He's been excellent, and uh, like he had to do it pretty tough there in the, in the prelude last start. So three wide, no cover on speed. But you know, the barrier's definitely been a, a little bit of an issue for him, but he's got gate speed, he can roll forward. He's been impressive, and with a bit of improvement, he'll be hard to beat. Jane Ivel joins me now. Let's talk Longleaf and also written by. Look, Longleaf is a horse that has always been really mature in physique. He has been from, since just about day one. Uh, I think he looks terrific today. Uh, he's certainly got some physical upside over a lot of these runners, and as I've mentioned before, an attitude to go with it. Uh, he looks fantastic. Written by, look, he is on the small side, but he's done absolutely nothing wrong, and he parades better every time we see him. Number three is Run Nan, the first of the Tony McAvoy four. Already heading out onto the track uh, to be ridden today uh, by Andrew Mallion, uh, run Nan being a son of Muckfee. Well, look, Work. he is a horse that it suits him to uh, head out onto the track early because he can play up a little bit in the yard. He's a horse that's really well conditioned for this. And uh, look, he's getting better and better every time he steps out at the races. Yeah, worked home uh, well, didn't he, in the prelude uh, from back in the field. And he's got to improve a little bit, but uh, there's not much between so many of these. And, you know, he, he's sort of in the mix, but a bit further down the order than... Uh, many others I had him. I think he's his right price at $26.
Uh, we move on to Mick Price's runner, Prairie Fire, a uh, Prairie Fire, I should say, the son of Snitzel on the backup hutch uh, from the win at Flemington last week. Yeah, they put the blinkers on. Really impressive win in the Talon Dirt, and the first up run behind Ennis Hill was excellent as well. Gate one needs some luck from there, but uh, produces a powerful finish as he did last week, and he could win it too. He's a really tidy type of horse, and I think he stretches out really beautifully in the walk. Uh, the worst I've seen this horse was Parade was uh, on debut, and he has uh, gradually got better and better every time I've seen him much more relaxed and probably the best I've seen him today certainly handling the back up. Prairie Fire to be bitten by Mark Sarah. Number six is Encryption. Uh, Damien Lane rides the Godolphin uh, two-year-old son of Lon Rowe for James Cummings. One run this prep, finished second to Annis Hill. You would imagine there's a, a lot of improvement to come out of that. We saw Prairie Fire finish third in that race. So step up to 1200 looks a, a big plus. We'll need some luck from the gate. Stable mate is Plague Stone, again a son of Lonro, James Cummings and Ben Millam. Another one with the one run this prep behind, written by, caught very deep in that, gets a much better run today with natural improvement up to 1,200 in the right run on the race, Plague Stone can win. Again, he's probably one of the more mature colts in the field. Uh, he's a well-muscled type of horse. He's quite eye-catching too. He's a fantastic colour. Another one that's very focused on race day and uh, doesn't uh, get on his toes, doesn't let too much bother him. Nine is Grand Symphony, a son of Glass Harmonium. Jai McNeil rides for Robbie Griffiths. Doesn't have the experience of a few of the others. Only the one run went second to Kinky Boom. Nice performance. I think others have looked sharper. Ten in Baha, an unbeaten daughter of Magnus. Again for the Lindsay Park team. Corey Parrish, the BMW Caulfield Cup winning rider. She rolled forward uh, on both starts. Um, drawn a bit high. I wonder if they'll try the same tactics again. She might have to work a little bit from out there, but it's, uh, it's hard to really knock the winning form. The 11 is Kinky Boom, Craig Williams riding for Tony McAvoy, a massive group of owners involved in this uh, daughter of Spirit of Boom, some of them first time owners in racing. Been a big day for Craig already and well he's uh, got a good chance aboard this filly, she was a very impressive uh, winning on her debut, leading into that she was uh, an impressive trial winner and we don't know really uh, how good she is just yet but from what we've seen she's very talented and couldn't knock, if you, knock her if you wanted to back her. Look she was a horse on debut that nothing much phased her at all. She has got a little bit worked up with the occasion in the mounting yard today. Probably not as bomb proof as we first saw her when she came to the races but um, physically she's looking good. Number 12, Lady Horse Owner. Good luck to Nikita Berryman riding for Greg Urell. This lovely little daughter of Equiano. Uh, she's got a cult following already, Hutch. Two from two. She's all heart too. She's uh, shown plenty of resolve in each of those victories. Uh, this is her toughest test, as it is for all of them. But, you know, she hasn't done too much wrong. I think she needs to raise the bar a bit, but, you know, most of them are open to that. 13 is Ennis Hill, the daughter of Fastnet Rock. Stephen Baster riding for Lindsay Park. I loved her win last start. She jumped, controlled the race and was too good. There'll be more pressure here, but she's got uh, great early speed. She can kick off that. She doesn't necessarily have to lead, and I, I think she's the one to beat. Her race day manners have got better every time we've seen her. Uh, she hasn't broken out into a sweat this time. She does have the two strappers on her, and she really pumps herself up on race day. She wants to do more, but um, physically she looks great. She's got that big, strong back end on her, and uh, she's uh, fully worth following. Number 14 is Crossing the Abbey. Tim Hughes trains this daughter of Helmet to rib ridden today by Luke Nolan. More runs this prep than most. Had, uh, this will be the fourth run this preparation. And clear forgive behind Inbaha last start. The form prior to that was pretty solid. So, um, look, needs to step it up a little bit, but capable and probably around the right quote at $71. Quafile comes into this race first up, the daughter of not a single doubt, Dwayne Dunn and Lindsay Park, who of course had phenomenal records in this race. But we don't often see horses first up in the Blue Diamond. No, we don't. She didn't do too much wrong last prep, though, so it won't be an easy task, but um, you know, she is easing in the market, but we saw a lot of quality about her last time, and if they overdo it in front, I think she'll be well suited. 16 is Uhud, the daughter of I Am Invincible. Luke Curry for Tony McAvoy. Her late splits have been fantastic in the preview and prelude. If she jumps on terms and gets the right run in the race, I think she's good enough to win as well. I've watched her as she's progressed in her last couple of runs and uh, she's had this race as her target and she's certainly peaking for it. She's come right on in the coach, she's tightened up nicely and uh, Tony McAvoy's got her spot on for this. 17 is Arist Aristocratic Miss, the daughter of Fox Wedge, Jamie Carr for Tony McAvoy. Performed well this prep, 
Um, she's fourth run in today. She does need to step up a notch or two. Um, I think on exposed form, if she hits the frame, she'll be doing well. And Philip Stokes settles up. Number 18, more than exceed, the son of more than ready. Dom Tenor takes the ride. Good win first up, but this is a big step up from what we saw there uh, for this colt. Uh, but good luck to Connections. Um, we're still yet to build uh, a ceiling on this galloper, as is the case with many others. Light rain hits us here at Caulfield. Hutchie, give us your top four for the Group 1 Blue Diamond Stakes. I'm giving four numbers. I could give another four and not get close. It's that kind of race, I think. But I think Ennis Hill, um, I like the fact that she can put herself forward in the race uh, and uh, it looks a great chance. Plaguestone should get a nice run tucked in behind. I think if Uhud can jump, uh, also going to run a big race. And written by, I don't want to leave written by out of calculations either. Jump, roll forward, big chance for me. 13, 8, 16 and 2. Let's find out what the rest of the team like. Uh, Shane is going with number 13, which is Ennis Hill. Brent Zarafa is with Plaguestone. We've got Nick Ashman with Longleaf and Matt Hill also with Plague Zone. Jane, what was the best from the paddock? Well, I think there were two Colts that really stood out in there, and they're Longleaf and Plague Stone. They're both uh, really nice, big horses. Uh, they're mature, and they've got really great attitudes. Very, very difficult to split the pair. I've gone narrowly with Plague Stone on top of Longleaf, so Plague Stone is my pick of the yard of the fillies. It's my opinion that Ahood is peaking for this. Uh, she's been a little bit behind in her coat, and she's continued to improve every Every time she's gone to the races. So, uh, as I mentioned, Tony McAvoy's got her prime for this. It's now time for a market update for the Blue Diamond Stakes. And it's been a massive go here for Written By on Bet365. Money has continued. It's now halved its price from this morning and sits at the top of the market at $5.50. Most other runners remain solid with a little late support for number 11, Kinky Boom, which is firm from 11 into $9. All right, a massive crowd building here at Caulfield for the Group 1 Ladbrokes Blue Diamond Stakes. Let's get uh, some insight from some of the trainers, uh, and we'll start with Tony McAvoy. Tony, you've got four runners in this race, so we'll go through them race book order. Run Nan, who went out onto the track early. Yeah, he does that. He gets a little bit excited and a bit, of, uh, a bit dangerous to my staff if we uh, uh, hold him up too much. But look, he's really trained on beautifully, this horse. Uh, he's had a very solid preparation into the race, and uh, Blinker's first time. Uh, he'll, he should run really well. Will he push forward from gate two? Look, I don't know that he's got the speed, but he will be closer, I hope. Next uh, to talk about now is Kinky Boom. One from one, big group of owners. So impressive here the other week. And she's presented superbly. She looks better today than she did that day because of what I did to her coming in that week. Uh, she, she's very composed and very good filly. What about Uhud? Um, she, she's the filly that's had the best form coming in from, of mine and just had no luck. Trained on superbly, presented much better today in the cooler conditions and she seems to be in the right frame of mind. Aristocratic miss, yet to win but has run so well. Yeah, she's got form around the leading contenders here. She's very fit, very tough and, uh, and she'll be hitting the line very strongly. Of the four, Tony, which way do we go? I like Uhud. Best of luck. Thank you. Tony McAvoy with Uhud as the pick of his four. Let's hear from James Cummings, the good often number one trainers with Jane. Well, James, two quality colts to line up in the Blue Diamond. We'll talk about encryption first. He's had the run under his belt. Are you pleased with the way he's come on since then? Yeah, he's uh, definitely grown a leg since the chairman's. Um, galloped really well during the week. And, uh, and, and I felt like he's, uh, he's tightened up nicely after finding the 1,000 too short for him first up. Plans from that wide barrier? Well, like Damien Lane loves the idea of riding the horse a little quieter. And there's no doubt the horse has been um, crying out for six furlongs, even in the first three starts he's, he's, uh, he's had for us so far. We just haven't had the opportunity. Uh, so at his first chance at 1,200, he, he likes the idea of, you know, making sure his last 500 is his best. And Plague Stone, uh, he's a horse that certainly put his hand up when we saw him step out here last start. Are you happy with his progression? Yeah, I thought it was a beautiful Blue Diamond trial here a fortnight ago and he looks to have gone ahead. Um, he, he, uh, he's got that bit of X factor about him and, uh, and, and, and hopefully, um, hopefully we see him sort of explode today and, and, and grow a leg second up because we haven't had the opportunity to see him put two together so far in his preparations. Here's a horse that from the barrier we may see a little bit further forward in running than uh, encryption. Yeah, I think so. I think he, um, you know, the, anything could happen. Uh, they're re very lightly raced, but I imagine he could settle down more like uh, fifth, sixth or seventh. So um, it puts him in the firing line and he can, he can go when he, when he feels like he's ready. How do they compare or differ as racehorses? Oh, you know, look, they're both, um, they're both unassuming colts and they're, they're, their best is uh, ahead of the both of them. Um, but uh, I'd say 
Blake Soames just does have a little bit more X factor about him, but gee, I, ha I have to feel like uh, watching his training in between runs that encryption is really flying. Well, all the best with both of them here. Thank you. James Cummings there with Jane Ival. We're just getting news through regarding uh, Horse 9 Grand Symphony just being uh, plated behind the gate, but work has been completed. Quick final word from Hutch and Peter Moody regarding the Blue Diamond. Yeah, Pete, final word? Uh, Kinky Boom was the one that impressed me as an individual in the yard, um, just as a type, but worries me that she might be back and wide in the run. Uh, written by, goes forward, makes his own luck. Like you said, 16 in it. You can pick 16 yep. and not be without a hope. Very, un never seen a more open blue diamond ever. No. But as an individual type, Kinky Boom really impressed me in the yard. Yeah, it does look wide open, Shane. It certainly does, Hutch. $1.5 million in prize money on offer. This is the 48th running of the Group 1 Ladbrokes Blue Diamond Stakes. Here's Matt. Left, mate, left. Thanks, Shane. What a cracking race it is. Plenty of anxious owners in the mounting enclosure. Plenty of study. Plenty of video watching over the last month or so comes down to this a scamper for 1.5 million dollars overall. Now McAvoy long leaf kept quiet out behind the gates by Karen McAvoy, about to be called forward. Aristocratic Miss awaits her turn with Quafila and more than exceed. Ramdan was taken down to the start early and stands patiently. Plague Stone goes forward. Ben Malam in a white distinguishing cap. Well supported, written by from the outside gate is the favourite here. So money for Plague Stone was $10 into 9 on VOPs. En Baha more than exceed aristocratic miss and crossing the Abbey to get set along with Quafila. Jockey Dwayne Dunn, who has won this race four times. Trained by the Hayes, Hayes, Dabernick Yard. David's won the race six times. More than exceed goes in. Fafila joins the line. Aristocratic Miss crossing the Abbey and Enbaha will be the final three. Very open race, written by 550. VOP favourite, Ennis Hill 7.5. Longleaf 8.5 with Prairie Fire. Plague Stone $9. Kinky Boom at 8.5. A Hoods at $9. So many chances. Aristocratic Miss mills around. Then Baha's the other one. A little bit of kicking out wide. It looks as though they're getting written by in rideless. Crossing the Abbey stands patiently. Jockey of a hood, Luke Curry, just momentarily out of the saddle. Starter heads over to the platform as the uh, light rain just sweeps across the track. En Baha is the final one forward. The Ladbrokes Blue Diamond Stakes, $1.5 million race over 1,200. En Baha is in. Set to go. They're ready. Set to gallop. Ready. Racing in the blue diamond. Quafila a touch slow. Kinky Boom's going back towards the end. Written by began well with Lady Horse Owner and crossing the Abbey. Grand Symphony not far away from Aristocratic Miss. Driving through Plague Stone and Ennis Hill and Prairie Fire on the inside as they settle. After 200 metres, crossing the Abbey on the outside of Grand Symphony. Written by out three deep from Lady Horse Owner, Ennis Hill and Prairie Fire on the inside. They were followed by Plague Stone and Aristocratic Miss. Run none on the fence midfield from more than a Seed Longleaf in a hood, followed by Encryption, Kinky Boom, En Baha, and Quafila last. Crossing the Abbey at the 550, leads three quarters written by Lady Horse Owner up around the outside, three deep from Prairie Fire, stalking them. Then Ennis Hill, next Aristocratic Miss, further back in the field, Plague Stone, a hood to the outside, only about four off the lead. It's written by, taking the lead at the top of the straight, written by from Lady Horse Owner, Ennis Hill, Prairie Fire back to the inside, En Baha late down the outer, written by at the two. 200 metres, two legs in front, and Baha charging on the outside, but it's written by, written by for Jordan Childs. What a victory, what a moment for the young man. Three legs, in Baha, a hood third for fourth. Prairie Fire prominent from encryption. Kafila, aristocratic Miss Lady Horse Owner. Ennis Hill Kinky Boom, followed by more than exceed Grand Symphony. Run Nan behind those Plague Stone, crossing the Abbey, and at the end of the field, Longleaf. Written by Jordan Childs, his father, Greg, won the race back in 1992 with Reva Diva. And written by, has stormed a victory for trainer Graham Begg, the cult by written tycoon out of Yao Chin. Jordan Childs from the outside gate has been far too good for them in the Blue Diamond. Well supported, clear favourite in the end. 
5.50 on VOPs from N. Baha, who was right down the outskirts, flashing home. Corey Parrish for Hayes Hayes Davidick. And a hood in third, number 16, Luke Curry for Tony McAvoy. 2, 10, 16 and 4. 2, 10, 16 and 4. Fifth, number six, Encryption. Sixth was number 17, Aristocratic Miss. 109.86 the race time. 109.86. Written by is the winner of the Blue Diamond Stakes for 2018. Written by who won the prelude in fine fashion after sitting up on the pace. The Cult by Written Tycoon has just run them into the ground. What a win and a dominant win. It's won by about two and a half lengths. Let's hear from the winning jockey, Jordan Childs. <laughs> Jordan, that excitement, that f those feelings starting to run through the body, that is because you've just won a group one. How good is it? Oh, I've done. Words can't really describe it. It's fantastic. <laughs> the faith that the, the big family have shown in you. He's a quirky horse, but they've stuck solid and nice reward. Yeah, it is. Um, he's been a tricky horse and special thanks has to go to um, Joey who rides some track work and also Snowy behind the gates and... Shane Stockdale as well, and um, Thomas, young Thomas has been doing a lot of work with this horse, and it all comes down to these big days when it really counts. You would have grown up watching your dad thinking one day that will be me, a Group 1 winning rider, and now you get to embrace it and enjoy it. Yeah, that's it. Um, obviously, growing up and started out through the ranks, all you want to do is just win, be riding on the big days and win Group 1s, and to win my first being in Blue Diamond, it's fantastic. Group 1, Geordie. Thank you. Cheers. This is a very special moment for trainer Graham Begg. Welcome back to the Group 1 winners list. Thank you. It's a bit of a watershed moment, actually. It's a special moment. I know you've spoken uh, long and hard about written by and how much ability you've always felt he had. Look, Shane, he just doesn't know how to lay down. And, you know, I just knew after his first up run, he'd just improve out at leaps and bounds. You know, everyone thought, oh, wide gate. You know, that was a knock on him. But he, he's just had the best couple of, couple of weeks since the prelude. And his work on Monday morning had to be seen to be believed. You know, he had he galloped in company and he just had so much left in the locker. And uh, I just knew he was spot on. Take us through your emotions watching the race. Oh, oh, oh well, here we go again. Three wide outside the lead. Doing it tough, but uh, he just let down so well. And, you know, just so proud. Mum and Dad back at home. Uh, they'll be delighted. Let's talk about that because your dad, one of the all-time great trainers in his own right, Neville Begg, uh, bred this this uh, colt and no doubt he's enjoyed the ride. Oh, no doubt. And like He bought the mother for $3,000 and I don't know why he hung on to her for, but you know what, uh, he saw something in her and she goes back to pins and a pedigree and he persisted and bred from her and everything she's had has been a winner and now she's got a Group 1 winner. It's just outstanding. Graham, you've had a lot of success over the years, but of course you walked away from racing. How does this Group 1 win feel compared to some of the others? It's getting right up there, I can tell you. Uh, this horse, you know, like three, three runs for three wins, it's pretty special and, uh, you know, it's uh, onwards and upwards. Will we likely see him go on to the Golden Slipper? Look, we'll let the horse do the talking for us. We'll have a very easy week coming up. It's a month between runs. We'll see, but you know what? We'll make sure the horses come to number one. I'll let you go and lead him in. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Graham Begg, a very happy man, has written by now three from three, the son of Written Tycoon, out of the Taboog Mare Yao Chin, uh, raced, uh, bred by Neville Begg and partners. Of course, Neville being a Hall of Fame trainer in his own right. Graham's had many Group 1 successes over the years, but I think he's going to enjoy this one uh, and enjoy it uh, for a long time. Uh, Clinton, Pete, that was just an outstanding win. Pete, we were saying before the race that it looked even. Afterwards, it was anything but even. It was, um, you know, he, he summed it up well, Geordie, he didn't rush across, he just uh, cruised, like he did here the other day from the awkward yep. alley, he wasn't worried about it, just let the horse put himself in a position and, uh, you know, great to see the big family back on centre stage, Graeme Begg, a Group 1 winning trainer, so great to see him back where he belonged and owned by uh, Mr and Mrs Begg, you know, no finer horseman than Mr Neville Begg, he's a, a great man and, uh, and uh, 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 even better trainer and uh, to see him in the ownership uh, I'm sure they're very elated up there in Sydney and uh, you know congratulations to all terrific effort and great to see Geordie Childs yeah. son of a gun yeah. uh, now, a, <laughs> now a group one gun so terrific effort for all and sundry there and how good is he he still did a bit wrong on the straight he was just running away from something and he seemed to have a lot left still looks a bit raw and um, did he get on his Sydney leg halfway up the straight <laughs> <laughs> might be telling them something <laughs> <laughs> may well be doing this and now we better head over to South Australia and Adam McGrath Go 
Jordy, Jordy, give us a one, buddy. Give us a one. Thank you. Thank you very much.